Hey everyone, we're going to get set to get underway um, for the meeting. And let me just turn down the lights. Okay, as you all know, tonight is going to be different, something we've not done um, in the past as well. So what the format of tonight is going to be is I am going to do my announcements uh, as normal uh, again. Then we are going to turn up the lights, turn away the screen. The people at home, you can see this little thumbnail here and with the lights up, they'll be able to see. The people at home are going to be able to watch this simultaneously. The TV camera we have is on the podium as well as the back um, too. So people at home could watch. We are going to have people come up then. Um, so anyone who wants to just make any points at all uh, and whatnot, we have people in the auto audience want to comment, I'll go through all that too. So it should be an interesting uh, evening. But first, let me go through my usual announcements uh, for the coming few weeks. Um, coming up, meet, meetings coming up, uh, August 4th, photojournalism, our first photojournalism night. The deadline for that is usually 48 hours before the, uh, the contest. We have the next slide. August 11th will be our first creative competition, which will be a projection uh, competition. Um, the date uh, from, uh, for that to submit photos is also on the website. Next slide. Um, August 18th, we're going to have a live lecture, uh, again, by, um, by request, Coleman is going to talk on uh, Coleman Rosenberg capturing great images at events. A lot of people who cover events, either for our community service or for just other things too, had a lot of questions of, you know, how do we do groups, how do we do groups at tables, how do we, how is the best way to do event photography as well. And so Coleman, who has done a lot of that, has agreed to speak on that. So that'll be a live presentation here on uh, August 18th. We have the next slide. August 21st is a, uh, or August 25th is an interesting, it's going to be a Zoom talk, um, Accidental Journey into Fine Art and Conceptual Photography by Heather Evans Smith. Uh, she also had a very, like the other speaker we had the other night, a very unusual journey to photography and does amazing work. And I'll have more on her and you could visit her website. It's listed on our calendar page. And that'll be a Zoom talk. Next slide. Our SIG meeting, we had that break for the July 4th weekend. And that's starting up August 3rd, first Thursday. Dave Bush is going to be talking on black and white photography. Um, then we'll break off into camera groups as usual. Um, next slide. Fireworks, again, my plea, the website, I usually have the pictures up in 48 hours. If you're on the fireworks boat cruise, send in your pictures for the field trip gallery. And next slide. And if you're on the Nelson Kennedy Ledges field trip, send them in. We already have some up there now. Next slide. The CPS summer party, the event of the summer. Like I said last week, I found out we are renting a grill and we are cooking hot dogs and things like that. If it rains, we will cook them in the clubhouse here. I mean, whatever we have to do, but we are gonna have a cookout. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be a potluck. Um, and that is August 26th. So we really like as many people as possible. And so save the date then. Next slide. Um, August, coming up August again, Pixel Connection is giving us a very deep discount only for members um, CPS for um, sensor cleaning. To get that, oh, take a seat up here. To get that, um, go to the website, sign in, go to the members uh, only section, and in there you'll see the offer and you could get your coupon for that. Uh, next slide. We still have some positions available. This has been very popular in the past. We have uh, uh, John Soraya giving his portraiture and lighting seminar. Um, flash, studio, uh, studio lighting, everything. There's gonna be lighting setups, models, the works. John is doing that over a three-day period in September. We've limited it to 15 students. There are still positions available. And you could sign up under the school page on the CPS website. 
uh, next fall school enrollment, all three fundamentals, Lightroom and intro to Photoshop photo editing are starting for the fall. The first one, August 30th, coming up is Fundamentals of Good Photography. Um, the sign up is available on the website. Volunteers needed. We again are pushing for a volunteer for the exhibit committee. Um, we need some people who can assist in uh, finding venues, helping with setup, scheduling. No special skills needed at all. Um, just a willingness to help. They will teach you everything you need to know, and it's a great way. There are only three or four exhibits a year, but it's a great way to start getting involved. And there's more information up on our website about that on the home page. And as always, all of our uh, public meetings are live on our YouTube channel. Just go to our main website page, click on the YouTube icon in the upper right-hand corner. When you get to the YouTube channel, just click live and all of our presentations are there. So now what we'll do is you can go to the full screen and video off. I'm gonna turn the back lights on here. Yes, there are people sitting up here. That's right, who have been in the, in the dark. So, um, the people were doing okay there on the, okay. So, uh, hello to everyone at home. This is our first CPS forum. Um, if you remember my slide, like the Roman forum, I'm envisioning something like that, not like one of these food fight weddings or things of that as well. Hopefully this will be respectful, but not too respectful. I mean, that is, that, that takes the, the fun away because, um, and, and again, just to start off, we're talking about AI here, but unlike other people who are having serious discussions because it involves businesses, legal things, money, there's nothing involved here. There's no money for the competitions, there whatnot. This is fun, whatever we want to make the rules of. So, speaking of rules, um, the people who are going to be making the rules are the competition committee, not myself. Um, and they want to get as much input as possible. The competition committee is headed by Dave Tripp and Gary Marich. Um, our, our individual uh, category chairs of the competitions, you have Bill Keaton, uh, who is uh, nature. We have Eric Worthington, who is people. Hmm? Wethington. No there is no R here. I put that in. Eric Wethington. My, my apologies there as well. Um, Dan Sandy is creative. Maria Kaiser is, uh, Mariah Kaiser is photojournalism. Randy Biter, pictorium. Uh, Marge Brady is B competition um, as well. And I didn't, what do you? What? And they, it's, there's no R written down here, but I put it in. And I'm looking to see where is Dave, and Dave is written right here. Dave Saboric, of course, and black and white as well. All right. My apologies there. So this is our competition committee. Those are the ones who are going to be making the rules. And speaking of rules, what's very interesting, even I didn't know this, and I'm going to just preface this whole thing by a few remarks, is what are our rules? I went to the competition rules, that's on the website, and pulled the rules, uh, again, these were last made about five years ago, 2018 to 2019. And I was really surprised to learn um, that there aren't any, uh, kind of, is the rules are, the way they're written, is we all know nature. Uh, nature is nothing, manipulations that alter the truth of the photographic statement are prohibited. Photoshop digital manipulations may be performed in a minimal sense not to change the truth of the original nature story. Cropping, levels adjustment, slight color enhancements, contrast, slight dodging and burning, sharpening, etc., are allowed. Heavy cloning and layer masking, though hard to identify, would violate the truth of the image. Notice it says heavy cloning is not allowed, as opposed to whatever light cloning is. 
<laughs> that, is our, that is our nature rules. But black and white, the only rules here are images must be in true black and white or in one solid color tones, co tone, such as sepia. Any spot color will disqualify an image, period. In other words, there is not anything. If you wanted to put a, a bird there, you wanted to take out things too, technically, that's not in our current rules. Creative is, of course, anything you want to do. Um, people, people, it, the only thing we have two lines, includes all aspects of the human form or evidence of the human presence. Images may be either in color or black and white. So you notice no editing prohibitions there at all. Now, this is just because there wasn't much we were doing back then. But it's just that this is the committee's got a good job because we want to clarify this for the, for the judges. And pictorial is always interesting because pictorial isn't really a category. Pictorial is you could take any of the prints from any of the other ones and use it there. A people image, an image from creative or whatnot too. So if you have a people image that you want to add a funny hat to, that maybe wouldn't have been eligible in people, but pictorial it would fit. Because pictorial, you could say that's a creative one. But what this shows is, is basically, and photojournalism is not listed here because it's not considered a competition. So what it shows is that, and we've done fine through all this time, but it would be nice to have some rules so that we all know what we're, what we're doing, the judges know, because right now we're, there's, there's not, not much there. Now, I have gotten, since the original um, AI lecture, a fair amount of feedback uh, through emails. And I've heard a lot, and it's very interesting. It's, it's, the whole, it's the whole area is really covered. There are a lot of people in favor. A lot really don't care what we do. And there are a lot that are really uh, against this. And I have had feedback arguments and some very persuasive arguments that this stifles creativity, that it can be a crutch, uh, lazy to clone things out rather than moving things, too much emphasis on technique um, as opposed to the photography, um, all technical and no art or feeling, um, showing what's on the camera sensor only. I mean, these are all valid things, but so this is not an, an easy thing. So before we open this up, I just wanted to, to throw some things out there just to think, uh, think about. When you talk about creativity, we allow uh, a PSA, the largest organization in the world, uh, Photographic Society of America, does not allow in its um, travel category any set up shots. Meaning you go to somewhere and they hire a monk and put them there and say, look out the window and the 50 photographers get there or the Cormoran fishermen, where from five to seven in the evening, they do this and all the photographers are told to go there and whatnot. They is strictly prohibited in PSA competitions. There cannot be any setup. However, in uh, CPS here, it's totally fine. Just to show you that there is no right or wrong, it's what one photo, photo society says, for these reasons, we are not allowing this, and here we allow it. So rules could be different, again. But I also say with that is something done is a beautiful image that was a setup, is still a setup. How much creativity is involved in that as opposed to catching the person doing something at just the right moment when the light's just right, knowing that's a perfect shot and getting it. Now, it might have some things in there that distract, but there's a lot more creativity there, I think, than 50 people sticking their tripod in one spot and told to you know, do the settings there. So you could make an argument like that, too. Um, the e macro, putting Mike Motes, when he talked about putting and using green cardboard and things like that behind flowers, I mean, what's the difference in a sense, putting the cardboard behind the flower, in which case you get a perfect image and that's what you see, and no one has any problems with that, but yet afterwards, masking out and in post-processing, putting a green background, it's the same, th I mean, in the end, the image is the same, but you have people saying, well, no, one's no good because it's post-processing and the other is pre-processing. So again, it's not that simple. We talked about, putting a, wanting to take a picture of a really nice dress in a store uh, window. 
but there's a reflection on it of the building across the street. So you put a polarizer on. The shadows, the reflection is gone. You take your picture. No one has any problem with that. That's legitimate. But if you don't have a polarizer, you take the picture, and then in Photoshop beta, you take the reflection out, now everyone's got a problem with that. But it's the same thing. Reality was with the reflection there. We've taken it out, but one we say, oh, that's okay. And the other we say, no, it isn't. So we've just got to be consistent sometimes. And my favorite example, Ansel Adams, um, 1944, before Photoshop, 1944, Winter Sunrise, Sierra Nevada. This was the one that he said in his book, uh, Making of 40 Photographs, that it was, this was in the Alabama Hills, and some high school kids had written the initials LP for Lone Pines, their high school in the side of the mountain. And as a conservationist, this offended him so much that he took it out of every print he ever made of that and he said he was criticized by his fellow photographers for not, but he said he's not so much of a purist to know that that destroyed the picture and it's better that way. Now, what was interesting about this, fast forward to my dentist. I know that's a, that's a stretch, but two days ago I was sitting in a dentist chair. I was sitting in a dentist chair and as he's talking to me, which I'm not paying any attention to anyway, I look in front of me on the wall and there is Ansel Adams' photograph. The thing too, and I'm looking at it, holy crap, there it is, that's, you know, that's uh, 1944 Winter Sunrise Sierra Nevada. And I was thinking to myself as he was drilling away is, this is, does my dentist know that, that this was altered and that thing was taken out? And the answer is no, my dentist doesn't know. And then the other interesting question is, would it make a difference if he did? And the answer is no. He bought this picture because it was pleasing. He liked it. The people who see it like it. And so what difference does it make that if you told them, hey, do you know he, there was actually something here and he, he took that out, he's not going to take it off his wall and throw it away and say, oh, I, I wish, thank you for telling me that. So with some of these, and this is 1944, and that picture we praise as, you know, this is, this is beautiful. So these kind of things have been done for a long time. Um, the other thing is, is, as Bob Koleski pointed out, we teach these things in, in Photoshop and whatnot, how to do them. So here we're teaching how to replace skies, take things out, but then we're saying, well, you can't do these. The other, but the interest, the, I think the most interesting thing, and I just pulled this from last week, is you look, the other people expecting us to do this are the judges. The judges are saying, Always pay it, uh, this one judge, always pay attention to have the border patrol as part of the workflow, either cropping or clone stamp tool can be used to refine the image. Another judge that same night, the little highlight above her hair is also distracting and be brushed out in post. So you have the judges telling us, oh, you could take this out and you could take that out and whatnot too. So, you know, that's something again to, uh, to keep in mind that it's not straightforward. Um, some of the best fine art landscapes, so just all fine art photographers in general that are doing landscapes, do very heavy burning and dodging and whatnot to get lighting effects that are really dramatic, like Ansel Adams did in the dark room. Um, that again, and that's fine art photography, they're selling these things, people accept those, are, it's really beautiful. Um, but again, that would not be allowed under some of our rules. People competition, portrait pro. Portrait Pro, take out blemishes. We've been taking out blemishes from time immemorial, smoothing skin and whatnot. That is technically altering the image in pixels and whatnot, but we don't think anything about that. So what I'm kind of getting to is, this is not new stuff that came on last month and, oh, we have AI and what are we going to do with this? This is just an extension of what we've been doing already. Purchase textures. We talk about composites having to be all our own things. When we use a texture that we purchased off the internet, you're really doing a composite with something that's not, you didn't take a picture of. But, but again, those are beautiful pictures. We enter them, we don't think anything of that. We say, no, that is fine. But technically, you know, if we're gonna use the same logic, that wouldn't be it. Um, we were talking about this just before, extending canvases. We've been extending canvases since the year one. To someone's, you know, through no fault of your own, when you framed it, their finger's a little too close to the edge. So just extend the canvas a little more blue out there. We've been doing that, but that's technically adding something to the image. Um, you know, the, a pop can in the picture. 
you do a beautiful shot and there's a pop can bottom right. And we say, nope, taking that out is no good. But yet, cropping it out is fine. So wait a second, you're altering the image. I'm moving the image in and cropping, and that's good. But just hitting it with a clone stamp is not good. So we kind of have to be consistent with whatever arguments we come up with. Um, and the other thing is, when I talked about PSA, my last point of where we can do whatever we want. PSA had that travel rule with no setup shots. PSA, we have the hand of man. We're no hand of man in our nature. And we've always had that, and that's fine. That's the way the club has is, is wanted it. PSA allows hand of man to, uh, if, it if it doesn't really interfere that much with the truth of the image, it could, you could have hand of man in there as well to some, to some extent. So it, this just shows that with this, a lot of this is going to be what our club actually wants to, wants to do. Um, again, and there is no right or wrong on this. And because our projector is down and we don't have any slides, I really went old school. <laughs> With my magic marker and this is, a, so basically is, this is one way to think of this, and this is my plea on all of the AI, is to really break this into two parts. And one is taking things out. You know, it's, it's, that's one thing. And my point is, is that AI, AI is just, it's like um, content aware on steroids. We've been doing this, Ansel Adams was doing it, we were doing it with the old clone stamp, and, extent, and I gave those examples. We've been doing that forever. So that's not really that, you know, that difficult. The difficult part is the putting things in where you're talking about with like Photoshop beta being add a hat of someone, add a person in there. That's one where there's a, you know, a, a lot of discussion, where should we put that? Should it be a separate category? Should we allow it in the others? Putting things in is not as straightforward as, oh, just put that all in creative. Because what about sky replacement, which we've been doing, things of that sort. So these are all the complex issues there as well. So that kind of helps it. So enough of me now. So what I'd like to, to do is basically is bring it up to any, any comments you have to make. And then what I'm going to do is if any people in the audience have rebuttals or comments too, or you know, our competition people will let everyone speak and respond. So I, who wants to be the, come on, there was, I know there's someone. This is, yes, yeah, we, we can have a bunch. We'll have everyone up there. Come on up. Oh, I, I am sorry. Wait, have a, any, so when I don't have things written down, is to give you an idea, just a, a basic thing. What we did is we kind of talked of this preliminary and wrote up just a preliminary thing to keep in your mind as one suggestion. And Bill Keaton kind of came up with, with, with this. I read that. Uh, yeah, if you're going to start changing rules and everything, at some point you had to put something on paper. So that's basically all this is. It's something we put on paper as a starting point and a place to have a discussion. So I'll just read what I wrote and submitted to our uh, committee. Fellow CPS members, we have to acknowledge that AI is probably the next leap forward in digital imaging. And as a photo club, we wish to establish boundaries without unnecessarily stifling competition. With that in mind, the competition committee is considering the following additions to the competition rules. In the black and white nature and people categories, AI may be used to remove distracting elements from an image. This is basically what we have allowed with the use of content on wire fill and heavy cloning, the use of textures and other editing techniques may be used as long as it does not change the basic theme or intent of the image. In the nature category, this should follow the guidelines of light cloning, which is already allowed by the rules. In the creative and pictorial categories, AI may be used to generate comment or content for an image. The main subjects of the image, however, must be photographically generated work of the member. 
The use of AI shall not be used in any image submitted for photojournalism. The strict rules of PJ still apply. And these rules are not meant to stifle creativity, but to maintain our integrity as a photography club. Without these changes, it is possible for a person to use an AI program to generate a photo quality image and enter that image in one of our competitions. This, I don't think, is the direction the club wishes to go. On the other hand, AI should be looked at as another tool in our photo bag. There needs to be some restraints to maintain the integrity of our photography club, but like any other editing tool, it should be up to each member to embrace the technology as he or she sees fit. So that is kind of what is a starting point. Okay, Gary? <clears throat> Well, I'm going to change what I set out to say, which is, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> so I like that. Um, I brought some examples, but I've learned I can't show them, so I'll try to describe them. Oh, tell, you can't show them because we don't have a projector, not because there was anything. Right, right yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. Don't touch the bottom, it turns it off. Hold it a little closer. Okay, fine now? Um, I'm working on a, sh a show, I think I mentioned in my presentation, of my friend that passed away. And one of his shots was a, a brown pelican coming right at you, a male brown pelican. It's got a, it's got a white reddish head and a colorful beak and it's, it's glaring at you as it comes at you. But the problem was the right wing was right against the frame and I, I just needed a little more out there. And fortunately, the beta came out with generative AI the background is this swirling water. It's, it's a tidal surge, and the water's wavy and surging, and it's just beautiful. So I, I extended it a little bit with generative AI, and you can't tell. It's the same story. It's the same, it's the same theme. It's beautiful. But I agree it should be in creative or pictorial, not in nature, because it's, I've added. I should not me. The AI added content. Well, do you think it should be? What do you think? I, I agree with what Bill proposed. That's what I was thinking earlier. That this this that if I'm if I'm extending the picture, or putting a person in, and I played with it a little bit. I, I put up I put a dolphin in the background, and I put a battleship, and it, it's. You can do anything you want to, and it looks good. <laughs> well, but Bill, I put that question to you then. Is extending is extending the canvas, just adding more blue. Well, it's, the more, same it's, as it's, it's swirling water, and it matches up wonderfully well. Okay. What do you, yeah, you what want do you, me to answer that? Yeah, no, I'm just curious what your opinion is. There's no... If you are, in my opinion, if you're extending a background that already exists there, that's not much different than textures of skill because you're not adding a different element to the photograph. So I don't think that extending a canvas should be disallowed. Now, if you put a battleship in the background, <laughs> yeah. that's different. You're now, you're actually adding a New different content. subject to the photograph. If you're taking the background, which is already there, and simply extending it a little bit for aesthetic purposes, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. You can do that. Anyone in? Yes. Let's have, wait. We're going to ask. Get some audience feedback. Wait. Oh. I, 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 let me just uh, answer Eric's question. He says you yep. can do that with cloning. It would have taken you weeks with cloning to do as good a job as what. But it if did. it would have taken you weeks, and but now it with the playing field leveled with beta and you could do it fast. That doesn't make. If it's not changing much of the image, yeah, that's. So, Eric, yeah, that would be my thought. Is that yeah. I, I, I agree with Bill. If you're uh, adding more of the same content, okay. i.e., well, adding first. more of that space, I, you know, maybe you're adding more cloud or adding more wall, you know, water, that would be fine. But you're not adding a new element in, into that photo. So, I, I think you'd be good. Yeah, we got a comment. I'm happier with that yeah. decision. Okay, wait, we got a. Yep. I just have a question. What if the wing tip was cut off and you added the wing tip? Would that make a difference? 
If the wingtip exists on the other side of the bird, you're you're basically flipping it, flipping a clone. So I, I might allow it because it's not an entirely new element, I wouldn't think. But I think if it was on the other side, it would, you'd have, like you said, you'd have to flip it, which we do sometimes Flip it anyway. and, and then perspective change it if you needed to, which is already in Photoshop. True. But with AI, you would just add it easier. Right, but you're only saying, what we're saying is should that be allowed. That's right. What Eric's saying is, is before it was hard, and we're saying, gee, now it's because it's easier, we shouldn't do it. It's a, it, the <coughs> only question is, should we be doing, does it change the picture? And what Eric and, and Bill seem to be saying is, is not really. I mean, there's a difference between adding that little tip of the bird versus putting a battleship. What, what do you think? What do, what do you think? Should it be allowed or shouldn't it be? True. You know, the way the photographer took it. So you miss the bird or you've got a whale and you have half his tail and you want to add the other part. Is that really good? I don't mm -hmm. know. Is if you miss, if you got out there and you knew the time of day, early morning, and you waited for the bird, and you got this beautiful bird in flight and whatnot. Um, you had your settings right, so you know it, it wasn't uh, blacked out or anything, and you got the bird, but you just missed that wingtip. I mean, you've done 99% of the things right. Should you be penalized not being able to use that picture when you've had creativity, you've been an excellent photographer and done that, just because that tip's missing? That, what do you think? Oh, I, I think you're, you know, that's right. I agree with you. So the other thing, I, the a point I wanted to make is, if we do AI, is there a way to make a before and an after picture if you have a separate category for AI? Because, like, if you put the battleship in that, you know, background, could you have... But you aren't you, you're talking about logistically a hard... Are you going to submit before and after for each you know one it's like no if there was a if there was a category for ai but but these but if this wasn't in an ai cat if we're allowing this in the nature or the people or the the things like that if the woman if the little bit of her hair head is cut off and you just extend that should you have to submit a before and after no i was thinking of if you had a real a big ai type of picture that you were working on then you okay. could do this yeah, right at the moment, okay. I don't think, I, have, I haven't seen a lot of consensus for an AI category right at the moment. I mean, it's something that's kind of been kicked around, and we, one of the things we even talked about, maybe just having like an AI night where everybody could just go crazy, and it would just be like a, not a competition, but you just come in and show your wild, your wild concoctions and see what you came up with. But um, okay. I... I this is this is my personal opinion speaking. I don't want to become the photography cop. Um, I you know I uh, I think we kind of functioned on trusting everybody, and I would hope that we could continue to stay along those lines where we just you know these are the guidelines and trust everybody that they're going to the follow the guidelines. Um, I'm not going to okay. become I'm not going to become the photography cop. I agree with that. Um, all right. So as a newer photographer and I'm out and I like to shoot birds and I'm out there and I get a shot and I'm missing part of the wing or I cut off the feet or something like that. I don't want to be falling back on defaulting on AI and saying, well, I'll just, I'll just go ahead and I'll fix it in AI because I don't really need to get the shot I'm after because I can take care of it in post production. And I think it's um, as a beginner photographer, I probably wouldn't do that because I want to hone my skill to the point where I'm seeing what I want and I have the frame of mind at that point to get the shot I'm after and not fix it in some other thing. It's a good so point. I've got to ask you one question. Uh -oh. what, what, about the, no, no. what about the photographer who gets an expensive camera and just sticks it on auto? and takes the picture. 
I mean, they're not learning any, but they're being yeah. lazy too. They're not, they're not developing their skills. They're, not, they're putting on auto and they'll get a nice, but should we say that you have to have settings, you know, in some way? No, no, no. So here it's the same, yeah. I'm just saying, personally, I would um, continue to try and get the shot I was after. Correct, but yeah. if you had the, my question to you is, you're right, and you would do that, and you, would make, you don't want this to make you lazy. But if you went out, and you tried everything, and you got the shot, but it was missing the wingtip, don't you think, you know, do you think you'd be, since you did everything you could, do you think you should be able to make that picture just perfect so that you could show it, or what's your feelings there? Or would you just not use the picture? I have picture? thousands of pictures of birds. <laughs> yeah. So well, I could go back to a lot of those yeah, and that, fix Yeah, well, that's them, what I'm asking. But I don't want to. I, I guess I, I um, no, personally, I wouldn't do it. I would wait till I got the one I wanted. But that's just okay. me. That, and th that's totally valid. That's, that's what we want, the, the opinion there. Yeah, Belinda, I'm going to make you come up. We have the cameras up here. Come on up, Belinda. Sure. I'll look yes. a microphone. <laughs> Thank you for this opportunity to throw in my two cents for what it's worth. Bill, I'd have to say I'm maybe 98% in agreement with uh, what you proposed there, with maybe a couple uh, tweaks of that. Uh, what is the people category where I think we should consider uh, an image has to have a face that was generated by a camera? Because I think it's just too easy with AI to get the perfect face. Uh, not I, right at the moment. No? Okay. Not right at the moment. That's one weakness that AI currently has is faces and hands and fingers and mm -hmm. toes. But it won't be long before they do. I was just going to add that. It won't be long before they do. By leaps and bonds, bounds. But when we get into a subject of, well, I guess I forgot to tell the model not to wear a striped shirt today. I just want to change the shirt she has on. Should we allow that? I don't know. But it's something to think about. Uh, when it comes to the nature category, I'd have to agree with our other speaker here. We need to have a way of rewarding the effort of our photographers who get up early in the morning, who knew enough to move a few inches to get a different perspective. However, I would still tweak nature to be, to say maybe changes that are incidental no more than maybe perhaps 10% of the image. I don't know how you enforce that. That becomes the issue, but one way might be to <coughs> ask that a raw image be submitted in a competition night with, the origin, uh, with your finished image and leave it to the discretion of our fine judges. That I took out a branch, that's incidental to the, the, the image, okay. I took out a rock because it was overexposed on the edge, okay. But I shot two birds and I think it really would look better with three and I added one, not okay. <laughs> Sky yeah, replacement yeah. becomes tricky. I don't know how to handle that. I don't think we can go down the road where we submit two images for s competitions. I'm the nature chair and I have to, one extra job the, the rest of these guys don't have and that's looking for hand of man. So, on a Wednesday night, after the things are done, Randy sends me the images, and I will go through them one at a time, very carefully, to look for the ghost of a house in the background or whatever. If you're going to have us look at a submitted image, a raw image, and then the competitive image, you're talking hours of work. I mean, I, I probably spend, if, if I have, 50 or 60 nature images, I probably spend at least 30 seconds on each one checking every corner, looking for, you know, so, you know, somebody submits flowers. I'm looking to see if I can see if there's a cut because that's a hand to man. I don't think it's practical to submit two images and ask these people to compare two images. What I do takes an extra half hour to 45 minutes for a competition. If I got to look back and forth between two images, I think you're talking two to four hours, and that's a lot of work and time. Well, then I would submit, we need language that says minor changes incidental to the overall effect of Right, and that's what his, in Bill's and thing that he wrote initially, right, we always work on trust. 
Um, <coughs> but in Bill's initial writing, he, he very skillfully said, we, we talked about remember, taking things out. You could remove minor things. So when your person, a different face, is not taking things out, you're putting something in. Changing the clothing is putting something in. But that didn't take into account adding a margin so that you got the wingtip in. That, that is adding content. That, and you're right, that's correct. Adding so the wingtip is adding content. I think the content. language needs to be modified a little bit to include minor, minor or incidental right. changes rather and that's, than saying only subtracting but not adding elements. See, and that's what makes this hard is the language because if we say, okay, extending the border mm -hmm. is, you know, with a little bit of wingtip, okay, but changing the, you know, the clothing is not okay, you're right, it's just, we're not being consistent, but we all know what we mean, so it's how you write that. Sky replacement becomes a little problematic to me, whether it belongs in the pure nature category. I really have a problem with that, I, I don't know. Where answer. do you think it should? I really don't know. I think the, if I, if I were involved in doing that, yeah. I would enter it in pictorial. I would be honest about that. Mm -hmm. No, nope, that's very valid. Wait, wait, Dave is here. Let me take the oh, mic. Thanks, Belinda. Dave, here you want? Yeah. I, uh, so sky replacement is is high on my list of. So I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, I think a sky replacement is not an incidental change of an image. I think a sky replacement is a major change of an image. Changes the complete look of the image and the complete tone of the image. Uh, and just because we've allowed it in the past, I think our rules should, should state now because we have allowed it in the past that it shouldn't be allowed for, for nature people or uh, yeah, it's not no, incidental. I no, no, that, and that's fine. That's a, that's totally valid. Wait. Come on, Bev. Come on. Come on. I spent all this money on the video thing. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Brian, you're next. That's the. All right. So. You're on. Oh, who's on? Uh, okay. So I don't compete. So in a way, my. Sit Rock down. Stone. Yeah. I, 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 but I do work a lot in Photoshop. And I'm going to take your course again, Vicki. It's like going to be time six. I'm looking for the record here. But um, I've played around quite a bit with the uh, beta. And it is pretty amazing. And if you tell it to do something, and you keep telling it repeatedly to do the same thing, time after time after time, even on different pictures, it gets better and better and better each time. It's amazing to me. But people who are on Facebook, I don't know how anybody could have missed the stupid photo that's being shared all over the place. And it is a definitely bucket filled blue sky with a, uh, a log fence and some grass at the bottom, a hawk out of focus, poor lighting, and a German shepherd sitting side by side on the fence. And the rest of the world is <coughs> looking at this picture and saying, oh my God, how did they ever do that? I'm like, they didn't. You know, they did not do that. They didn't even ha need a picture. All they needed was a blue background and <coughs> type in add green grass border at bottom of photo. And then they typed in add fence. And then they typed in, ah, German Shepherd. He's just kind of relaxing on the fence. I've never seen that happen on a split rail fence before, but there you are. And sitting next to a hawk 
out of focus, entirely different lighting, blah, blah, blah. And so somebody that I know pretty, you know, pretty good, or not real well, but says, but I think it's terrible that pe if people don't Photoshop things, that they lose contests. And I said, that's not true. Did Ansel Adams quote Photoshop things, or did he alter pictures? Of course he did. And, you know, on and on. So I think the most important aspect of all of this is do not add objects. You can add lighting in your pictorial. You can add, you, you just can't put a German Shepherd on a fence. I mean, honestly. But let me ask you that. <laughs> what about in, in creative category, where we have added, you know, spiders with human heads and whatnot. Mm -hmm. We've made things up. That's in our creative category. It's let's see how creative you can be. Isn't this just another tool? And everyone's doing in the creative category. Everyone is Well, yeah, doing they that. are. But it's creative. It's not nature. It's not... Right. That's what I mean. So creative is... People. You know. it's, yeah, I, I don't care what somebody does in creative. Right. That's, that's, that's what I was just checking. Yeah. Yeah. But when it comes down to, you know, somebody adding a gorilla on a fence... Right. Instead of... In the other categories shepherd, that know. wouldn't fit, and where we run of, into problems are the... What about the tip of the wing? Well, that's the, what I was going to address. Um, how many of you do birds in flight? All right, so quite a few. If you have a bird, a hawk sitting on a branch or an eagle sitting across the street from my house up on a bare branch, I can move and I can get the branches out of the way that I don't want there. I have time. When you have a bird coming straight at you and it suddenly switches its direction, you don't exactly have the opportunity a lot of the time to get that full wing tip. You're just firing so fast trying to get that bird. And you could have this beautiful, the best picture, I've had this happen, and, and they are, that tip of the wing is not present. Boy, if I put half inch extra on the can canvas, I, and I've added feet and reflections even with this bait of Photoshop. I mean, it's incredible what you can do. But that wingtip is the is the idea of the of the skill and the time that you've put into it invalid now because you could fix that. And I don't see why that would be any different than adding different light to a landscape. So that's, that's my non-competitor. Okay, any of our judges have anything to add on that? I'll touch upon one thing I don't think anybody's talked about yet, and it's Just probably the in the body. back of a lot of minds. With AI, uh, sharpening AI, especially topaz that will take an out of focus picture and maybe make it acceptable. Some of you have talked or touched upon this. Those of us that take pictures of birds and flights and stuff and take pride and have practice and everything to be able to capture the entire bird that we know not to crop too tight when we're shooting that kind of stuff. And then we see somebody come along that's a beginner and shoots and you know chops off half a wing and then puts it back in with photo AI. You know, this is a gray area that we need to think about because you know on the one hand that person does not have the skills and is using something artificial to fix the skills. And I don't think we're talking about that and maybe we don't want to but it's something we need to think a little bit about. I mean if you've been taking pictures of birds in flight for the last five or 10 years and you know how to do it right, and you see somebody that shoots and gets, you know, chops off a third of the bird's wing and then fixes it with AI, you go, mm, are they really improving their skills? Because now they're not learning by their mistakes. 
And that's one of the things that AI is going to allow us is to make mistakes and fix them. And if it gets too easy, and I don't think anybody's thinking about this, you're not going to learn you're good, because the next time, if you shoot a bird in flight and you chop off the wing, the next time you go and shoot, if you're going to learn from your mistake, you're going to shoot it a little less tight and make it work. So I just don't want to see AI become a crutch for not improving our skills. And I thought that needed to be said. Mm -hmm. Brian, you're, come on up, Brian. That's, I know. <laughs> Wait, no, press. You're alive. Okay. And now for something entirely different. <laughs> um, I'd like to make a few brief remarks. Anybody who knows me will recognize that brief and few are contrary to my usual behavior. <laughs> but I'll try to keep this short. Um, for those of you that might think this is getting too long in the evening and are looking for a good time to take a short nap, please do so now. Artificial intelligence is not. It's certainly not natural, and whether it is intelligent or not is open to debate. It simply parrots what others have created, be it in the processing or the elements of an image. There are, of course, many reasons for use, but it is nonetheless a potential substitute for your work rather than just a way of making your ed editing more efficient and effective. AI uses databases and algorithms, somebody else's databases, somebody else's process to make changes to your photo. An extreme view of this is plagiarism. But is it extreme, but is it extreme to use sky replacement or content uh, aware pixel removal or skin tone enhancement or any other clever tool? If it were a poem rather than an image, the answer is yes, it's plagiarism. I'm reminded of the advent of the calculator, a big step up from the mechanical adding machine It was able to do more far faster. What it was not able to do is tell you how to frame the, pro the problem you are trying to solve and how to use the answers given. Yes, <clears throat> some could do regression or net present value or statistical evaluations, which the person who's plugging in the numbers may not know anything about whatsoever. But they didn't create numbers. They simply processed them. CPS has always been a place for enthusiasts. And there have always been a balance between product, process, and product. It made the transition from film to digital. It even went from three megapixels to lots. AI is the natural result of all those pixels and all the things software can do, given enough processing power and access to other data and other pixels. CPS <coughs> celebrates craftsmanship. We understand the accomplishment of mastering fundamentals, both of equipment and post, but we also see the pursuit of these capabilities as a means to an end, and that end has to do with something more than the pixels and Photoshop. Images are one way we show how we see the world, how we preserve memories, how we communicate, and span the trivial to profound, the ugly to the beautiful, and the comic to the serious. In short, CPS is about the photographers as much as about the images. When we look at an image, we appreciate the skills brought to bear. The, skill, uh, the skills of AI manipulation are yet to be determined. If we can find them, great. I have two recommendations. For the nature competitions, keep the no hand of man rule, which includes intrusive processing. For all other competitions, no additional restrictions. Let's see what we can do. Just understand that there is a line that can be crossed that diminishes your work no matter how the judges score the end result, no matter if we can detect the uh, use of AI or not. I'm a cynic. I see AI, AI as augmented income for its developers. Math calculators allowed us to ignore math. AI has the potential to be something that dissuades individuality and discourages creativity if we let it. This is not so much about setting up rules. It's not about having uh, a system and so forth. It's more a matter of how we deal with a tool that, can, that could be used very productively and may not be. 
I don't think anybody here is going to appreciate a photo more because we say it was done with AI and we can see parts of it that are obviously, you know, a hawk sitting next to, or a, a bird sitting next to a dog or whatever. If it's comic, fine. But we're usually interested in how the photographer did it. We're interested in the people. We're interested in how we go about this craft and learning more about it. I don't think setting up rules for it is the way to go. I think it's asking questions when we see a photo we like and saying, how did you do that? So let's not constrain it. Let's embrace it. Let's see how much we can get out of it. And just know that if somebody uses it as an excuse for a lack of skill or a lack of interest in photography, we recognize that and say, nah, we're not interested. Okay. Well said. Any other comments? Come on. Yep, come on up. Hmm? No, that's that. You scared everyone off. Oh, that's it. Hi. Hello. Have a. There you go. Okay. My name it's is all yours. Uh, hi. I'm new here. Uh, I might get thrown out. No. <laughs> um, I met uh, Angel Adams once. He gave a lecture here a few years back while he was still alive. <laughs> but Ansel had a saying. He had a musical background. And he, he said, the negative is the score and the print is the performance. He would spend days, sometimes weeks, creating a print. Photoshop is nothing more than the dark room. And all is fair. Okay? So, to me, what's important is what are you trying to say? You know, why are you interested in photographing flying birds and doing it well? Great. Okay? But I mean, if you have something to say, uh, as Adams did it in the dark room. His technique of uh, using the zone system to, uh, for exposure and development of the negative. Uh, <laughs> I'm a bit nervous here, I guess. Uh, really, he knew the end point was in the dark room. Okay? And he would go to sites like Half Dome with his mule pack, okay, <laughs> on a mule. <laughs> and he, sometimes he would wait days to, for the sky to be right, okay, and for the elements to be the way he wanted, for the feeling he wanted to portray in this photograph so yep no I that's i'm for that's post-production yeah very very well <laughs> said because Ans to, to your point exactly ansel adams had you know and in his book making it 40 photographs he has his dark room di or his um dark room diagrams for some of his prints and they are extremely intricate I mean, it's, it's bleach this area for 45 seconds, burn this area for 20 seconds, potassium ferrocyanide down here for whatnot, burn, you know, and they were really, and what he taught so much is in his disciples was how to make his prints in the dark room. It wasn't so much how to go out and photograph them. He taught them how to make the prints because that was the complicated part. That was the you're right, the score, his, it was two parts. The negative was one, and that was his performance, too. And it just was, uh, like I said, it's, it's really impressive. Any other comments here? We, yes. Come on. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, to kind of bring this full circle, I guess, like getting back to the rule, the rules themselves. You know, is it, going through those and reviewing them, the, I think they've served us very well throughout the years. And I think some of the words that, that speak to that is the truth of the image. And a lot of what we're talking about here gets back to that. And also, being a photography club, we also come here to, to, to your point, 
to learn the, to, to learn the craft of photography. And by, by focusing on those skills and that, 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 take, that, that kind of solves a lot of these issues that we have here, you know. And extending of the, the, you know, extending a border or something, you know, does it change the truth of the image? You know, that's something we can talk about and discuss, you know. But I think as long as we, but adding, you know, having a computer program giving you commands to add content or to change the truth of the image, uh, then, then I think we've gone too far. We, we don't have a photograph anymore. I think we have a graphic image. And that would be my, 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 my caution with using these tools. But, we, but to everybody's point, we've been using the AI tools for a long, long time. And you know, they've, they've served us well. And we, we've always been honorable and truthful with, with keeping that to a minimum. And, that, and I think we, we need to trust each other. And yeah, I think we'll be fine. Yep. I think we'll be fine. Well, I agree. Well said. And you know, this gets back to when we talk about not wanting to make us lazier things too, is again, you could make it hard if you ha you're taking a picture of something and there's a pop can there. And you say, well, I'll just take that out and post-process it. You're, right, you're being lazy, just go and remove it or whatnot. But then it brings up the thing of oh, you're at the Cleveland Zoo and you're taking a picture of the tiger uh, down there too. And you've got this beautiful shot and everything, but someone has tossed in a pop can. Well, you're not going to go and remove it, too. But again, it's going to just take something away from the image. So there, it's not a, you're talking about removing a pop can in both, but in one, it's a substitute for your laziness. And the other is nothing to do with your creative vision. It's just helping you get, it. So get a good print. So again, these are very, I don't pretend to say these are easy things. As you've seen tonight, these are very, very, you know, difficult areas. And what we'd like to do is with the club's input, just have a set of just kind of guidelines that we're all kind of in agreement with so that we know, you know, really, we all have the same rules. But I think it's interesting on the minor things that the judges for years have been just Assuming, you know, why don't you just go ahead and do this um, as well? Anyone on the panel have anything to? Yeah, I'd like to talk other? a little bit. Yeah, sure. You, you're mic'd up. Um, yeah. Um, Brian's one of my mentors. And uh, <laughs> Brian and I have had this conversation, and he and I disagree, <laughs> so he knows how I feel about things. Um, I've gotten a lot of comments from uh, different members, and some of them have started off, I'm a traditionalist or I'm a purist, and um, that's fine. I think there should be a place for them. I s think, though, that there should also be a place for um, somebody that's not necessarily a purist um, or a traditionalist, and this is where Brian and I disagree. <laughs> um, I had one member um, talked about um, her experience out taking the picture, capturing the moment, feeling you know what she felt out there, um, and capturing it on film. And you know this was or on on her camera, and this was you know her image, and this was photography. And then she talked about uh, you know a painting. You know this is photography, and the painting is art. And so I th then I went and looked up a definition of art, and it said it's uh, manipulating an image or a, a, a statue or something to evoke an emotion or an, a feeling. And so, you know, you can even do that with a, photograph, uh, a photograph. So, you know, trying to differentiate between, like, photography or art, I have an issue with that. It's like... You're taking this picture, you're, tr you're trying to capture what you felt or what you saw. So if you're out there in taking your picture and you see something and it, you're trying to capture what you, you know, what you saw there without changes, but when I go out and I shoot something, I, you know, I'm, I'm maybe not necessarily see what's there, it's more like what Ansel Adams did. You know, he came out and said that you know his images did not uh, reflect what he actually saw, what was actually there, but it was his feeling. And so this other member was talking about you know pushing sliders, like it was almost just 
you know, technical or something like that. When I'm in Photoshop and playing with color grading or something like that, I'm trying to capture the feelings that I felt when I saw that. You know, it's, it's, something, it's something different than what the, maybe the purists saw, but it's the emotions, the feeling that I'm trying to evoke in, in the picture. Um, so I, I think we've got to leave some kind of um, space for those people that want to be creative. I think, um, I, I think the club definitely has a bias, or I don't know, bias is not the right word, is leaning towards um, the traditional. But I think you need to leave a space also for those that want to be creative. And I think that's going to be part of the challenge that this group is going to, to try and have to deal with. It's going to be, I think the guidelines are going to be um, different for each category. We're going to have to deal with nature. We're going to have to deal with creative. We're going to have to deal with pictorial. But I, I hope we can get to the point where we can respect the individual that maybe is not necessarily a traditionalist or the person that is a traditionalist that, you know, I've had some that say, you know, this is the way you do it, you know, you know, traditionalist, and this is the way it's supposed to be done. And I have a little bit of a problem with that. You, you need to leave a space open for those people that want to be a little bit more creative. Um, and so I'm getting a little bit even beyond AI, but I'm talking about, you know, writing these rules so that we leave space for, for both groups of people. This was, Dave, did you, have, did you have anything? I know you have views on this, but you don't want to give them tonight, or I'll stand here. They won't come close. <laughs> no, no. I have definite views. In well, then, your, then let's, and this is the time. Remember, there ain't no right or wrong. This, let's hear them. Richard, you know what they are, too. Uh, and I've expressed them to you and to some other people in, in, on the committee, too. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you were just talking about the difference between uh, a photograph and art. And I see it as a difference not between photograph and art because the photograph certainly is art. Mm -hmm. I see it as a difference between a photograph and a painting, for instance. What's the difference if I say I got a painting of Michelle Obama or a photograph of Michelle Obama? What are you expecting the difference to be between those two? You know, I'm, I'm one for believing that uh, somebody said, maybe Brian, uh, the truth of the image uh, for a photograph. And I, and I think uh, we do allow for, for creativity uh, in just having uh, a creative category, and uh, and then you even expand that if you're going to allow creative images to be included in pictorial. I think uh, we're giving a lot of room for for uh, creativity. So, can I, I answer the Michelle Obama one? Um, yeah, yeah the I knew you were going to because you've no. been you've been responding to everyone's comment, giving your point of view. Uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> here's where here's where everyone's very. Uh, no, you're you're right. I, I have a point of view, and and being moderate, I, you're right. I've expressed it, but what I hope I've done is to make it clear each time that this is just one. This is just my point of view, period. And the other thing is, I have no hand in what the, the outcome is going to be of this as well. Um, you're right, so I might have talked a little more because I'm up here, but I also hope I made clear in my view too that that does not make a better picture. 
I've had people tell me I'd leave the pop can in because that represents more like, you know, the real world or what. That's fine. I've never said one is a better picture than the other. It's just like I said my personal preference. So I I didn't I didn't I'm sorry. And what, are you going to attack me or defend me, Brian? Well, what? <laughs> Yeah, it depends on whether I call on you. Wait, let me give Brian a, it looks hopeful. Let me give Brian a mic. I just for the people at home, they're like away in Mentor. That's 40 miles. Yeah, they they probably don't want to hear any more anyway. Uh, <laughs> no, are we, I mean, the question here seems to be, we're getting hung up in the differences between the process and the product. That uh, we're judging everything about the product, what the, what the, what the photo looks like. And that seems to be the end goal of everything. And I don't think CPS has ever been like that. I think it's always a combination of both to see what do you come up with and how do you go about it. And I think that's the thing we have to kind of focus on here. As long as we put rules on it, we're saying, okay, you're going to be judged on this product and we're not going to judge this product if you don't follow the rules. And I don't think, I think that's a little bit backward. I think it's more a matter of saying, gee, we've got all these good courses, we've got all this opportunity to discuss with people about how we go about coming up with a really, an image that is interesting, that communicates, that makes us uh, respond in some particular way. It doesn't, we're not, we shouldn't be concerned with what type of score it's going to get in all the competitions. We often concentrate on that, but we shouldn't. Uh, it's more a matter you see something you like, you say, that's good. You want to find out how that person did it, how much skill was involved in it, how much luck was involved in it in catching the bird at just the right time or catching that time when the German shepherd is sitting next to the bird. Um, those types of things are all important. Where do you go to get a picture? What did you have to do? How did you get up early in the morning and have to sit there and wait for the sunrise? Or did you simply write sunrise into a program? That makes a difference. But you're not going to be able to determine that just by looking at the end product. You're only going to be able to determine that by talking to the people who actually made the, made the picture, and, you know, made that product themselves. And that's what I think the club is about. And I don't think it's about whether you get a 27 or a, or a 16 uh, on, the, on the picture. So I think it's got to be kind of a combination of all those things. I just don't think we uh, have to just concentrate on the process to the ex to just because of what, what, we're, what we're seeing, what we're going to use that picture for, which is put in a competition. Yep. No, and I... Amen. I agree. And remember, the, the rules are not for what makes a better picture. The rules are going to be for just what's eligible to get into the competition. That's the... I just want to make a brief statement of something we need to keep in the rules, and it might be applied in other parts of the rules. It's in our current nature rules. It says, we rely on your personal integrity to adhere to both the letter and the spirit of these rules. Right, which is what we always have done um, there as well. Yeah, Gary, come on up. I, I just have several thoughts. Uh, a lot of this is based on the previous speakers, and I thank you for sharing with us. Uh, I don't know your name. Catherine, Catherine the new member that commented about uh, she wanted to learn how to take better photography. That's why I joined the club in 81 and came back and whatever I did. <laughs> um, I think we can count on that, that people are, are joining this because they want to be better photographers. So I think, I think we, ha we can trust them to want to do that. Um, I think trust is an important thing. Um, the next thing I think of is art for photography. Many major museums, that are including our wonderful Cleveland uh, Museum of Art, mm -hmm. has a photography department. Yes, we're, we're I, was down, I was down there the other day. I'm there, I'm you, there regu I'm regu regularly. I'm there every Tuesday morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I forgot what the other thing I wanted to say was. So well, I do that all the time. <laughs> no, but that's, I, I wanted to, and then I'll get back to the audience here. I just wanted to, uh, one, I wanted to apologize again today. Uh, but the other is, is just to address the, the Michelle Obama. Um, because I think these things are important. Uh, a painter sits Michelle Obama 
down to take her picture. What we expect is that's going to be an, ex, a, a, you know, an accurate representation of Michelle Obama, what she looks like. Now, he sits her down. He doesn't have to have a ba She could be in the garden, and he could paint whatever background he wants on that. We don't really care about what was actually in the background. She could be sitting in a chair in the office, and he could paint like the forest in the background. But what we expect on that is that really is a good likeness, a good <coughs> painting of Michelle Obama. Um, in a photograph, it's the same way. We expect a photograph of Michelle Obama to look like Michelle Obama, what she was wearing and everything, to be accurate. But again, I think that the side things or what's in the background is, is just not... We don't have any big expectations on that, if I'm right. I mean, do you, do you disagree or... <laughs> I, I mean... You had to argue my point, didn't you? No, no, no. I, you I'm did! Just, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to try to get some consistency in. Okay, what I'm, see I asked a question, what's the difference between a photograph of Michelle Obama and a painting of Michelle Obama and what you're going to expect if I say I have a photograph? And if I say I have a photograph, I'm going to expect realism. Why? That wasn't me. Where'd that why, where'd that why, why come from? Oh, it came from Dave. Yeah. Why? Why would you expect realism from the photograph? Why? Because I'm looking at a photograph as something that was either on the film or on the sensor uh, that showed exactly what was there. For photojournalism, I would totally agree with that. Correct. I would agree with you there, yes. But not necessarily all categories. I'm, I'm yes. Not. Yeah, Bill. Is. I'm just saying what I, what I expect when you say you have a photo of a person. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the difference between a photograph and a painting of Michelle Obama? Artistically, nothing because you're trying to evoke an emotion and display something, and we're getting all wrapped up in processes here. Mm -hmm. Now then, and we're, processes for us as a photography club are important because we want to maintain the photography integrity. So when, I think somebody, Brian may have mentioned like the people category, if a person is a subject to the photograph, I want us as a photography club to have the f person entering that photograph have generated that photography. Otherwise, it doesn't make any difference. If we look, in, and you gotta remember, we look at things as photographers, which is different than the vast majority of people. When I look at an image on the wall, I'm looking at the impact, the emotion. I usually don't care how that was done. If you have a painting of Michelle Obama, I don't ask what brushes were used, what paints were used. We're looking at the end product. I think with using AI, we have to look at it as a tool, but remember that, and I said that in our opening, we are a photography club. And the, I don't want to stifle creativity, but I want to make sure that the main elements of our images are generated photographically by the person entering. And other than that, I don't really care. Because when you look at an image, 99% of the people that look at a painting or a photograph or a sculpture or whatever it is artistically, 99% of the time you don't look at that and say, I wonder how they did that. You're looking at it to enjoy and the emotion that's generated by that and in the end that's all that's important but as a photography club we want to make sure the major elements of whatever we display or show people is generated by us the backgrounds anything else you want to add or whatever that's incidental i don't care because in the end you're presenting an image and generally speaking, nobody cares how it was done. They want to see the image and the emotions that are involved with it. 
Yeah, Eric, you were going to say something? Yeah, then we'll get the bike out there. So most of you guys are newer, I, I expect. But when I first joined about 10 years ago, maybe even 12 years ago, uh, and Bill might remember seeing some of these, I did a lot of fantasy style portraits and where I took models, shot them against green screen, white screen, manipulated the backdrop, manipulated so they looked like fairies, ogres, vampires, and stuff like that. That was not AI, that was all done via Photoshop, where now I could say, take a picture of someone and say, turn them into a vampire. I don't know if that's the same thing, because I shot them in the outfits, I shot them in that style, versus I told a computer to take their likeness and create them. That's, to me, that's additive AI versus manipulated AI. Um, I'm not a fan of the additive AI. I, I am okay with the manipulated AI, if that makes sense. Yep, it does. Who had, there was, yeah, Belinda. Just an addendum for maybe down the road and not right now, but as I see AI becoming easier for more people to use, I think it's something to consider that we're going to see a chasm between those who are skilled using AI and those who are not in terms of perfecting that image that they have, which may have an effect on the desire for amateurs to compete. I don't have the skill to maybe do this, this or that that could make my picture as perfect as somebody else can. Could, Something could I, to think about. Okay, can I, can I just be devil's advocate? I thought of the word. That's what I'm doing up here, Dave. I'm being devil's advocate to this. That's a, <laughs> devil's advocate to that. Good point, Belinda. Is the, uh, with that, though, you were talking about, okay, what was your first example? You were, just in general, somebody can perfect an image to, to get rid of all these little flaws yeah. real quickly. Yep, it, it's one of the ways you could look, and I've heard it described like this, is but A, the new advanced algorithms kind of level the playing field for the beginner. In other words, right now, if your picture, if you go out and you get a picture of something, but there's this distracting element because you're doing candids or whatnot, and, but it's got a complex background before, the only one that could correct that was someone who has 20 years of Photoshop, an expert. The experts will tell you they were able to do this stuff a long time ago, but it was with extremely you know, labor intensive and they were really good at what they did. But what now, what they, the pros were able to do, the average person is able to do. So now, while they were able to show us perfect images because they took that distracting object in the back, which we weren't able to, now we can just draw a circle and have the same thing the pros does. So that's number one. It, it can be looked at as a leveling tool. The other thing is, I really, I teach in fundamentals, and I emphasize this point over and over again. What makes a good picture is one, the equipment, but two is the composition, the knowing the light, knowing the creativity. And I, you've all heard me say this, because I am a Nikon person, so I am on the Nikon uh, Z9 site and whatnot, and Z7 site, and, and Z9 is their flagship. We won't and, hold that against you. Uh, that, that is, yes. <laughs> so, um, and I have to tell you that on Facebook, um, on the Z9 site, 80% of the shots done by, you know, on there are snapshots. They are, because they're crappy composition. They're a bird with all kinds of busy things. They're whatnot. They're, you know, and it's obvious this person has a technically good camera and has the right settings. You know, so it's not that it's overexposed or underexposed, but they're crappy pictures because it just lacks that. You know, what are you trying? It's busy. This is just a picture of a hut or something like that is there is much more than just the equipment. So you could have all the AI in the world and turn out terrible images that just look like snapshots. I think there's a lot more that we try to teach here and as photographers, you know, uh, to learn. So you're right, it can be looked at in two ways. My devil's advocate point is that it levels the playing field and you still, you could have all the AI in the world and still do, you know, 
crummy photographs. I'm not talking about the, the ones where you ask it to generate a whole thing, but I'm talking about where we ask it to remove this or do that or whatnot. Unless you're starting with a good image, like Bill says, has impact, generates an emotion, there's things like that, then you're going to wind up with still a, okay, they've taken some things out, but it's still an eh, you know, image. So that, yeah, you've got another. Question. Yeah, let Yep. Comments. Am I going? Am I going to address the YouTube? Com Are there comments on? Yeah. There are comments on YouTube. Um, no. I don't know. In other words, I was going to end. Is no, because one, we are broadcasting live as well. And I didn't realize people were putting comments on YouTube. What I was going to do, actually, the answer is not no. I was going to say for those of you at home, you know, anyone, please. The info at clevelandphoto.org, if you have any opinion on this, send it in to info at clevelandphoto.org because we do want the club's input. We've gotten a lot of input tonight, and I want the input for those of you, from those of you who couldn't be there. All of those will get distributed. Everything you put in by email will be read by me and get distributed to the competition committee. And thank you for reminding me, because I would, I would check the emails, but I would not check the comments on YouTube. I will look at all the comments on YouTube and have those either addressed or forwarded to the, um, so if you put something on YouTube as well, we will get that to the competition committee because we want the feedback. So uh, good point, thank you for reminding me that. Bob. Uh, obviously some of us will lose friends when we comment. <laughs> so, but the fun is that we're no, commenting. No, absolutely okay, not. That's, that's the good news, we're commenting and we're having fun. Uh, are you going to come up, or are you going to do this no, anonymously? No, just, just a comment. Here. Okay, so Bob Koaleski is going to do this anonymously. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, um, I, I would. I would hope that once we work our way through this, that we have another opportunity to review what the committee is offering us prior to issuing the rules without further comment by us, because again. One of, the, one of the comments was made in regards to black and white. Now, I'm, I'm in a process of learning black and white photography. And, and to me, uh, it, it is a dynamic use of our processing skills that enables black and white to really have an impact. Yes. And, and if we restrict if we begin restricting by putting rules in, let's say specifically for black and white, which today has no rules because it crosses all genres of our photography. Black and white enables you to put a photograph of anything in it from any other category. So I think we have to be careful in regards to how we restrict because not, not only will we change the dynamics of the creativity, but we are also going to be limiting our ability to bring what we all want, dynamic photographs to the club, which, which not only represents photography, which is number one, but represents the passion of the photographs that we're taking. I will commit to that. Um, I will also say though that um, I am not going to be able to make everybody happy. The committee is not going to be able to make everybody happy. But we are going to do our best to try and reach a cons uh, consensus um, amongst all the committee members. So, um, but yes, um, we will send it back over for you to take a look at. Yeah, yeah I, I have one more comment. If you look at our calendar, we have things going on almost every day of the week. Uh, when I got first involved in CPS, I was there for more than once a week. It's, it's incredible what we offer. Uh, and competition is, is 12 times a year. It's, it's a small part of what we do and who we are. Uh, very small part. So uh, I just wanted to, to point that out. Competition mm -hmm. isn't the CPS. C 
competition is one small part of, of CPS. Yes. And competition does have rules and, and we're charged with, with forming those rules, so. Now that's, that's an excellent point. And in fact, that's, that's a point I think really just had to be made tonight too. We are talking about not photography in general and not AI in general. We're just talking about a narrow thing of what are the rules gonna be for eligibility for this small part of CPS too. The rest, when we teach our photography courses here in the schools, when we have critique night and people bring in their images, or what, there's no restriction on that. These are just images people like. We all wanna be better photographers too. So yeah, what we're talking about here are just those, those rules. John, come on up. Fantastic discussion tonight. Um, I came in with no preconceived notions about how and where we, we use AI, but I will say that the competitions, and I've recently put my photos in a comp couple competitions, I lean towards not touching it just to see the effect and the impact and, of course, the grade and what the opinion is on it. And I am growing from that. I am becoming a better photographer, I think. I like to think so, right? So um, thinking about this from a purist perspective, the, the raw image itself with minor touches here and there, uh, and the wing is, is a very debatable thing. Do you add the wing because you didn't get it? And so do you wait for the right picture or do you fix that and you, you know, generate the impact, the emotion you're looking for? Tough call. I'm, I'm undecided on that, actually. I'm leaning a little bit towards the natural picture that you took originally, and that's what you work with. So, um, but I also believe that the AI is unbelievable, and you've expressed it. Um, you know, you, you were talking about the amazing things it does, and I think we should have a category to play with that. But if you think about the image as the base, there has to be a ph photographic image as a base, and then you go do whatever you want with it and it gets you know the creative but you know it has to have start from a photo photograph that's just how i'm thinking about that but the other categories keep them as tight as uh, as maybe as they are and and the important thing that i heard tonight more than once is to trust us as members to do the right thing when we submit our images and as you brought up earlier, there's no money involved. It's just strictly we're looking at your image. We're giving it a professional opinion on the quality of that that you've, you've generated. And so that's my thoughts yeah. on that. Yeah, just thought I'd share that. Okay, great. Thanks, John. Oh, good. Anyone have any other comments, suggestions? Nothing like that? Good. I think we've raised... I think we've raised a lot of points, shown how really you know, difficult this is, but we really need some guidelines because other than that, you know, the judges need to know, we need to know and what not to, and then we just go from there. And nothing developed too is also static. Remember, you could go with this, you could change, you could change these you know, rules at any time and what not, we're a club. And as I look at rules of what other photo clubs have done, New York, Columbus, Cincinnati, and whatnot, they're all different. So it's basically what we want as a group, and especially the people who are competing. I mean, that's the you know, ones as well. You're the ones su supporting this and whatnot, and we want to make, uh, make it easy. So on that note, again, anyone at home, you know, write in info at clevelandphoto.org, and we will get those all to the committee. Um, and other than that, uh, thank you all very much for, for coming. Yeah.